All right, so let's do another example. Well, it's another example if you've seen my other videos. This might be the first one. Who knows? But in any case, let's do another example of the mean value theorem using it to evaluate a function and approximate uh, its value over a certain interval. And we're going to use the interval 4, 10 for the function f of x equals x over x plus 1. This is a pretty simple rational function, but there's just a lot of legwork involved, even though it's not crazy difficult. We'll use a calculator for some of it just to get past the fraction math. There's no point in, in delving into all of that type of simple stuff right now. It's just going to waste time. So in order to expedite things, we'll just skip past that. All right, so there are three basic steps to using the mean value theorem to evaluate a function. The first is just use the mean value theorem itself to plug in the appropriate values into this formula. Oh, not this formula. Good grief. This is the quotient rule. Don't listen to me. This formula, f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now, okay, what's our b and what's our a? Well, to find that out, you're always just going to go want to look, you're going to want to go and look at your interval, and this is just your ordered pair here for 10, not ordered pair, sorry, wrong, wrong vocabulary there, not ordered pair, just your interval. The leftmost number is going to be your a, and the one on the right, that's going to be your b, so that's all you're going to be plugging in. Every time you see b, we're going to be evaluating this number within this function or within its prime. So, uh, Let's see, what is the first step? I think a good idea, because we're going to end up having to have uh, the prime of this equation for the second step, which is to take f prime of the uh, original equation and set it equal to the answer you got when you plug things into the mean value theorem formula. Uh, let's go ahead and take prime of the equation. Now, it's a rational function, as you can see, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use the quotient rule, which is the rule for taking derivatives of a... Uh, of a quotient, which is f divided by g prime equals g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. And that really doesn't look like a squared, so let's fix that. There we go. All right, probably looks worse now than it did, but it's all right. We know what we're doing. So f uh, over g prime. Let's go ahead and label this. This is going to be our f. This is going to be our g. And let's go ahead and put it into the formula. So g x plus 1 times f prime, so x prime, minus f, which is just x, times g prime, which is x plus 1 prime. All right, all over g squared, x plus 1 squared. All right, so let's save ourselves some legwork. What is x prime? x prime is just 1, so this is going to be this function times 1. We can forget about the x prime. x times x plus 1 prime. Well, this is, we're going to use the sum rule here. So x prime is just 1. 1 prime is just 0. So it's one. this is just saying 1 plus 0. So since we're multiplying by 1, who cares? We can get rid of this and not worry about it. So that makes this a lot more attractive of a rational function for us to deal with. So on the top, x plus 1 minus x. And that's going to be easy for us to deal with in a minute, isn't it? So, x plus 1 squared on the bottom. This is our new function. Okay, so x minus x. Let's just get rid of these x's. And now this is really starting to look good because all we have is 1 over x plus 1 squared as f prime of x. This is, this is much more manageable. We can handle this a lot better. So let's go ahead and write this down over here just for future reference. So we know that f prime of x equals 1 over x plus 1 squared. So we have that for future reference. Let's go ahead and erase this work so we can get on to uh, dealing with the first step for which we've already taken this. We've already done the second step, which is going to make the first step uh, faster. So, well, not, not really, but, you know. You'll see what I mean in a second, okay? Bear with me. So, la, 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 la. get rid of this, get rid of this, give us some work room. Okay, so our first step here was to just evaluate everything into the mean value theorem formula, which is, if we remember, f prime c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So, let's say here f prime of c is f of b. So, when we're doing this, let's just go in. Well, this is f, and so we're go everywhere we see an x, we're going to put in a b. So let's just go ahead and rewrite this, but just put parentheses to not mess ourselves up. So this is that equation rewritten with all the x's just as parentheses, minus, and we're going to have the exact same equation again. Plus 1. Okay, cool. So that's taken care of. And then b minus a, which is just 10 minus 4, 
So let's go ahead and write in our B's and A's here. This is uh, all B's. This is 10, 10. This is A. This is 4, 4. All right, now we're doing just a more simple arithmetic here. 10 over... 10 over 10 plus 1, so 10 over 11. Let's make that look like an actual 10. 10 over 11 minus 4 over 5. 4 over 4 plus 1 over 10 minus 4, which is just 6. All right, so I'm going to take a break and just plug all of this into the calculator. Really all right, so we plug that into the calculator, and we got that this uh, giant rational here just equals 1 over 55. So this is our second important answer. This is uh, what we got when we plugged everything into the MVT. So let's go ahead and put that over here, MVT equals 1 over 55. So we have these two crucial pieces of information. Now we can get rid of all of this and get on to the last step, which is to set f prime equal to what you got when you did the mean value theorem uh, formula, when you put everything in here. So we're going to set these two things equal to one another. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 over x plus 1 squared. All of this is equal to... 1 over 55. Cool. Let's make it look like a 5. 57. All right, 55. Now, what can we notice about this to make our lives simpler? This looks ugly, but it's not. The denominator is 1 on both of these, so let's just kill it. Let's not worry about it. Now we can just evaluate the denominator. The numerator is 1. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. The numerator is 1, not the denominator. So let's just evaluate the denominator now since we can negate the numerator and not even worry about it. So we have x plus 1 squared equals 55. So what's an obvious function? Uh, function? What's an obvious path for us to go down? Let's just take the square root of each side. When we take the square root of this, it's going to kill this, uh, the fact that we're raising it to the power of 2. So we're just going to get x plus 1 equals radical 55. And then we can just do some simple algebra, subtract 1 from both sides, and we're going to get that x equals radical 55 minus 1. Now, Let's plug this into a calculator. I can do that while we're still on camera. It won't take very long. So we have the reason we're plugging this into the calculator is because f of x equals the MVT. We can only keep this value. It's only an acceptable value if it's within the supplied interval. So we have radical 55 minus 1. Decimal approximation, 6.416. So 6.416 is definitely in between 4 and 10. So we know that it's in the acceptable portion uh, of the... Uh, it's, it's in the interval that we were supplied, and we're good to go. So this is our answer right here. Uh, yeah, sorry. Right here. x equals rad 55 minus 1. Quick recap. We plugged everything into the mean value theorem formula after defining a and b from our set that we were supplied for our interval. We took f prime of the original function, what, or we took its derivative. We set the derivative and the answer from the mean value theorem formula into, uh, we set them equal to one another. Then we just did simple algebra to solve and arrive at our mean derivative for this entire thing, or our c prime, is rad 55 minus 1. It's just that simple.